my whole body is just lit up with light. There's just, you know, just this frosted light. It's, you know, it's not like a light you turn on. It's like moving around my arms and my body. And it's just like kind of like particles that just are not static, but uh, just clear and frosted. Uh, just that's supernatural i mean I, I you know i'm on my deathbed i'm not asking god for a sign i'm just knew i had to stay awake till the morning uh to live and god said it's you know just god's so merciful he's sitting here giving me another sign like this and in the beginning you know i thought i was fixing to die It's time for the Strange O'Clock podcast, where you get to hear strange news with Christian views. Welcome to the Strange O'Clock podcast. With Michael and Jerry, we have our awesome and unique host, Ken Shin, and Ken has been healed of COVID miraculously. So Ken, uh, please tell us about yourself and, and tell us about how you were healed. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on your uh, your podcast. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's um, in uh, December of 2021. I'd been uh, spending some time uh, right before Christmas out at our ranch and, you know, tossing around 60 pound bags of concrete, just, you know, just having a big time fixing some of the roads that were washed out and just enjoy being out, out in, you know, God's creation. And as uh, a tradition in our family, we all get together for Christmas Eve at my brother's house, who's passed away but we still carry it on and work out the guitars and sing Christmas songs and you know read about the birth of Christ but that particular night um, man I knew something was wrong I um, started wiping sweat off my forehead I was having cold chills and sweats and um, just toughed it out but that was the onset of it I, I should have gone to the hospital then but I, I didn't, I came straight home. My wife, my daughter, and my father-in-law were with me, went straight to bed. My wife, uh, she went and got a COVID test at the drugstore. You know, I tested negative, so that made everybody feel a little bit better. COVID was pretty much running rampant in East Texas. So the next day, Christmas, everybody comes over to my house. And uh, I never left the bedroom. I was just getting weaker and, you know, having a harder time breathing, uh, just sweats and chills again. And I uh, finally went on December 28th uh, to the ER clinic. And right off the bat, I was diagnosed with COVID-19, the Delta variant. They gave me some medicine and, you know, sent me home. Said, you know, if you don't feel better in a couple of days, come see us. Well, I was back in a couple of days, and uh, they gave me some stronger antibiotics and uh, told me the same thing. So I ended up going there four different times. Um, the uh, third time I went, they x-rayed my lungs. They said, you know, man, you've got uh, COVID-19 pneumonia. And I was sent home with the oxygen tank i've never been on oxygen i've always been healthy i don't take any medications you know no pre-existing conditions or anything like that and i knew things were getting serious going the wrong direction so i went went back the fourth time uh, and um, thank god there was a doctor there who had experienced a bad case of COVID himself a year earlier and he said the only way you're leaving here is in an ambulance 
and I'm going to see to it you get a room at the local hospital. And I was like, man, that's music to my ears. So, uh, you know, I sat around there and it was seven, eight hours. You know, he would check on me about every hour. And he finally arranged for a room. Really, I'm sitting there probably just waiting for someone to die for me to get in the hospital. It was so overrun. And I get there and, you know, short period of time, I'm confronted by four doctors. These four doctors are just adamant, uh, you know, to have me go on a ventilator. And, uh, you know, just one by one, they were just taking their shots at me. You know, I'm sitting here in a wheelchair at this time, just barely hanging on. And, you know, they're telling me, you know, you're not in your right frame of mind. You know, we're here to help you. Let us help you. Um, and uh, I just told them, I said, you know, everything that I've read and studied about all this, I said only 12% of the people that go on ventilators live to come off of them. Wow. Good for you. And I said, I don't like those numbers. I said, you know, if I'm going to die, like you say, you think I'm going to die, I'm going to go out with whatever awareness I have. And so it kind of ticked them off a little bit one by one, you know, they left, uh, and it was, wow. it was, a little bit, it was confrontational. If, wow. if I, if I had been wrong, I think they would have called me out. You know, they, none, none of them said, Oh, it's 30% or 50% or 45 or whatever. So I made my decision and, and they said, well, you know, this decision's on you. I said, yeah, I take responsibility. You know, I'm, and Shortly after that, I was being um, in a bed, just rolled down the end of the hall, uh, closed the door, pulled the curtain, and pretty much just dis dismissed me to die. And that's when I knew things were getting serious. Um, since I wouldn't go on a BiPAP machine, I mean, a, a vent, I, I let them put me on the, a BiPAP breathing machine. Okay a mass that forces oxygen into your lungs. And I knew as I was struggling, you know, each and every breath, just, you know, we don't think about breathing as we're talking right now, but it was such a conscious effort. I knew that if I went to sleep that I was going to die. And so I stayed up all night long in my weakened state. This is 1030 at night when they rolled me down there. and. And, you know, the first passage that came to my mind was Genesis 32. You know, Jacob wrestled with the angel all night long. You know, he didn't say a five-minute prayer. He didn't, you know, he thought he was facing imminent death, too. He thought, you know, Esau was going to kill him, going to, you know, kill his family the next day. And you know, I felt like I was facing imminent death. And he just, and just the desperation set in the seriousness of it. And my prayer wasn't even for me. Um, you know, I have a daughter and my prayer was, you know, God, just uh, let me see my daughter get more established in the faith. You know, God, let me see her get more grounded. Let me see her get, you know, more mature and independent and uh, just broken hearted over it all. Just, uh, you know, I thought, how, how did this happen so quickly? You know, well, a week ago, I'm tossing around 60 pound bags of concrete. I can't even stand up now. I can't hardly breathe. And, uh, I knew that it's just me and God, there's nobody there. There's, they've sent my wife home. They, my brother, one of the doctors knew him and, um, said, you know, if you want to see Ken again, you better get up here real quick. Cause he's probably not going to make it through the night. So it's just me and the Lord and, and I just wrestle with God, you know, all of the scriptures that I've known, um, you know, for 50 years, you know, I just, they all just started flowing up through me. I just, you know, God, you're my ever present help in my time of need, you know, God, I mean, I need you right now. I'm, I'm, I may not have tomorrow. I probably don't, you mm -hmm. know, I need some divine intervention, uh, you know, Psalm 73, 25 and 26, you know, my flesh and my heart faileth, 
you know, I'm just crying out to God, God, you know, be the strength of my life, God, quicken me, God. You know, all, all these passages that had to do with desperation, like Hannah praying and, you know, the Hebrew children in the, in the fire, you know, just deliver me from death. Um, you know, I thought about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, he sweat great drops of blood. Medical term is hematidosis. You know, such was the the passion and, and all. And uh, just, I thank God that I know the Word of God like I do. Uh, you know, after a period of time, I just really started focusing in on the Romans chapter eight, verse eleven, about if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. You know, he'll quicken your mortal bodies. And, you know, I'm just uh, in such a weakened state. And as I begin to just drill on that and, and meditate on that scripture, it's just like, a, you know, it's like electricity started flowing through my body. Uh, you know, we, of course, as believers, we, you know, we'd call that the quickening of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm just weak and it's just like, bam, you know, I just felt this power and the surge of energy. Wow. Uh, it, it was really the first of three experiences with God that night that, you know, I thought, well, you know, just maybe I can, maybe I can do this. You know, I've never pulled an all matter in prayer like this, but wow. you know, when you're, wow. when you're, one, when you're one breath away from death and eternity, mm -hmm. you know, something, you know, if you have the will, something rises up in you or it did in me you know, to, to fight and to try to prevail and, and really seek after God, you know, I, you know, I, I'm like the disciples, you know, Jesus said, you know, can't you hang out and pray with me for an hour? You know, can you just hang with me for an hour? You know, that's Kim Chen, but you know, when you, when your back's against the wall, when it's life or death and, and I wanted to live, you know, uh, I, I really, I wanted to be here for my daughter, um, uh, you know, just to, uh, to see her grow up more and you know she's that situation this is it's a special situation so you know after a period of time i felt like this this whole energy just left my body and i began to feel desperate again and just my mind's just roaming through the scriptures and i started drilling down and you know romans eight twenty six about talks about you know the holy spirit it's just you know, you know, with just groanings, which words cannot even utter. And I mean, I'm just in dire, just, oh, I'm just, oh, oh, this, you know, I felt like my insides were about to burst out. There's a groaning in the spirit, just, oh, oh, just, you know, God, God, come through for me and, you know, doing that for a period of time and and I just opened my eyes up and my whole body is just lit up with light there's just you know just this frosted light and you know, it's not like a light you turn on it's like moving around my arms and my body and it's just like kind of like particles that just are not static but uh, just clear and frosted uh just that's supernatural i mean I, I you know i'm on my deathbed i'm not asking god for a sign i'm just knew i had to stay awake till the morning uh to live and god said it's you know just god's so merciful he's sitting here giving me another sign like this and in the beginning you know i thought i was fixing to die i've read all these stories about these saints you know they on their deathbed or close to death and you know they look up and they say Man, you know i see the heavens i you know i see the clouds i, I see angels and you know this light and surrounding them and nobody else sees anything and you know they breathe their last they fall back their spirit goes on to be with the lord and i really i thought you know this is it um god's not going to answer my prayers the way i want him to then I don't know, a few minutes in it on that, I um, I just became fascinated. I, I, I didn't die, so I was just, just looking at my arms and my body and this light that stayed with me for you know, 30, 45 minutes. And, you know, just the 
glowing of it. And I just was just trying to breathe. And, you know, God just breathed into me the breath of life like you did, Adam. Just, you know, just struggling for each and every breath. And just the peace of God came over me and the, and the love of God. And just, uh, this, uh, just the anointing and uh, the presence of God in the room. Uh, you know, it, people might think that's kind of spooky or whatever, but, you know, it's just so biblical. It's not, you know, I, you think about Moses coming down from the mountain, you know, his face was glowing. And, you know, we think about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration or Stephen when he was being stoned. You know, he said, you know, he looked like an angel or something must have been lit up. And, and you know, everybody talks about God is love, which, of course, God is love. You know, First John 4, 8. But, you know, if you back up a few chapters, First John 1, 5 says God is light. You know, light is light is part of God's very essence and eternal being. And, uh, you know, there was just such a great comfort it gave me. Uh, and, you know, just to see into this spiritual realm, you know, a lot of the Old Testament prophets, they were called seers. You know, and that they saw things that the rest of the people didn't see. And so, yeah, I'm... Um, hanging on there and after a period of time the light just disappears and you know i just uh i'm in intense prayer that's awesome after after a period of time um you know as i'm continuing to pray and you know lead going in and out of the psalms and you know thinking about jesus being our high priest you know he knows the feelings and our infirmities and you know, he's touched with our weakness and um He's our high priest, and, and 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 all this is going on, and and I hear it's like coming from behind me. I hear the spirit of God speak to me, and you know, I, I mean, I'm I'm on my deathbed. The last thing I'm expecting is to hear the the spirit of God speaking to me. You know, I'm just trying to to hang in there and live. But I heard that God, you know, you shall live and declare the glory of God. And the second time I heard it again just with more conviction and more authority, you shall live and declare the glory of God. And it's just like rattling around in my body, and my mind, just processing this. And then there's a third time, just with more power and conviction. And, you know, I hung on to that word. You know, it's one thing to know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and the you know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, you know, Colossians and so forth. But, but when God, when God gives you a rhema word, a specific word, and when the spirit of God, you know, drills down it and you know, it's, you know, it's the, the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You know, Jesus said, my words are spirit, they're life. You know, the psalmist said the entrance the entrance of God's word gives life. And this, this word was like life giving to me. It built my faith, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, you know, this was probably three 30 in the morning or so. And I, I, I just repeated that verse, you know, I don't know, a hundred, a thousand times the rest of the night, just, you know, God, you know, you, you said, I will live and declare your glory. And, um, you know, so it's a few hours pass, and then I hear I hear a rattling on that glass door, and when that nurse pull that door back, pull that curtain back, and I, I just felt just like I was on a rocket ship. It just I just had such a surge of the spirit of God and a, and a joy. I've never experienced this much joy in my life. Just, you know, the Bible talks about joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it just overwhelmed me. You know, I, I was just, you know, if I could have gotten up and danced, I would have. I had such a, a joy and power come upon me. And, you know, the craziest scripture I'm, you know, I'm sitting here and like God's telling me about the children of Israel. And when they were in front of the Red Sea, you know, mountains on both sides, uh, 
Egyptian armies coming barreling down on them, fixing to kill them. It looked like imminent death. God parts the waters. They walk over on dry ground and they're on the crossed over the other side. And of course the Egyptian army died in the water. I felt like God was telling me, you know, Ken, you, you've crossed over. You've, you know, something happened at just in my spirit, in my, at my whole life, my whole walk with God, it marked me just like Jacob. You know, God was Jacob turned into Israel and felt like God was saying, you know, you, you've crossed over, you've prevailed. And then I thought about David and the Psalms. It's such a beautiful word picture. You know, they didn't go down to the grocery store at, you know, I don't know where y'all have at Walmart or Brookshire's or Safeway or, you know, Publix or whatever store you have there. But, you know, David said, our soul, our soul has escaped out of the death trap. I felt like God was saying, you know, Ken, you're, you, you prevailed. Your soul has escaped out of the death trap. Like, you know, bam, the animal that got away from the hunter. And just such a beautiful a, a picture, I felt like, that, of exactly what had happened. I felt like God, you know, reached into the, the lion's den of death like he did Daniel and just reached in and just pulled me out. And, uh, you know, it's just it was just so powerful. Uh you know, to be, to be alive and so, so grateful and, uh, and, uh, to see what God, God did and, uh, you know, and the whole working of it, uh, it was just quite miraculous. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and yeah, that's awesome. And, Praise God. You have a, a mighty command of the sword of the word of God, sir. I'm here writing notes. And I mean, you just quoted like at least 50 scriptures off the top of your head. I, I think that's, that really shows um, the power of, of standing up and wielding that Jedi lightsaber. If I dare use that reference uh, sure. in the face of the enemy. Um, were oh, you able I, I, to I, grab those scriptures during that time? Like when you were feeling that under it all, was it, was it easy to still quote the scriptures? And it was all I had. Uh, it was all I had. I've had uh, friends ask me, you know, that, you know, I, I, to answer you, give you a little background on me too. I, I have a Bible degree and I've, oh. a, a theology. And then I also have worked oh. toward a, ma a master's degree. But, you know, beside all of the formal education, I just, you know, 50 years of studying it, hearing it. But, yeah, I mean, I, I tell people, you know, they say, well, man, I don't know if I'd have made it, Ken. And I, I'm just, you know, you got to speak the truth in love. I say, you know, if all you got is John 3, 16, you're going to have a hard go, brother. You know, Jesus, when he was confronted in the wilderness, he couldn't say, you know, hang on a minute here, Satan. Let me go get the scroll down there at the tipple. Let me un unroll this thing and see what it says. No, he just, bam, it, it is written. And Amen. I think we have to have the word of God, you know, the word and the spirit working together in our lives. And, you know, it seems so much like there's a divide, you know, people are either mm -hmm. so spiritual or these people are so wordy, they got no spirit. And, you know, there's, um, of course, you know, y'all both know we have to have both, uh, to, to live and, and you know, um, so yeah, it, it, that was a, a very key part. And, I think it's so important too. I had a um, a man of God. He ministers in the prophetic. I mean, I you know I know there's quacks out there and so forth, but this is it doesn't mean it's not real. There are people who actually have that gift. Sure. And, and yeah, he, he, he truly he, believes that. Yeah, he sent me this. Uh, he sent me. He had no idea. He's kind of in and out of my life and. Um, he sent me this message. He says, you have wrestled with God and you have prevailed and won the victory and wow. God will get, and God will get all the glory. Now he had no idea. You have wrestled wow. with God. You have won the victory and, but God will get all the glory. And he said, I wanted to change that. He said, I, I wanted to say, you know, I'm saying, God, you know, am I hearing this right? He said, I wanted to say, you know, you've wrestled with God and God won the victory and God gets the glory. But he said, I couldn't put it. I couldn't send it to you that way. You've wrestled with God. 
and you have won the victory. It would have been so easy for me just to roll over and die. I mean, it would have. I mean, right, I right. had moments where I was like, you know, wow, I don't know if I can do this. But, you know, right. that wrestling with God and there's something about co-laboring with Christ. You know, God does his part, but, you know, we have to do our part as well. You know, we, we quote that scripture all the time. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, you can. Sure. You know, you stick it on your refrigerator. But, but the point, you know. I can do all things through Christ, through the power of God through me. You know, we, we are co-laborers with Christ. Uh, and, you know, I think too often we just think we throw a prayer up there and that's all we do. You know, sometimes there's, there's a wrestling, you know, Jacob wrestled with the angel. You know, right. Jesus struggled in the garden to, you know, to surrender. Uh, there's, right. uh, you know, there's a, it's a battle. Um, and, uh, you know, there's uh, the word of God and the spirit of God and the struggle in prayer. Uh, it takes you to a whole different dimension. Um, right. You know, uh, so, yeah, I've uh, I walked into a bookstore. And I thought, well, you know, I, I'm going to buy another book on prayer like, I, you know, like I need another book on prayer. <laughs> And as I was in the, as I was in this bookstore, I felt like the Holy Spirit speaking to me says, these guys don't have what you have, Ken. You know, I mean, I, you know, a lot of people got head knowledge and so forth, but they've right. never, they've never spent a night in prayer. They've never been one breath away from death. And, and I signed it. I'd end up turning, walking around out of the bookstore. I'm not telling people not to go study prayer. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, uh, you need to know the word of God. You need to, uh, you need to pray and all that. But uh, I'm just saying there's a dimension way beyond head knowledge. that's experiential. You know, there's all the difference. There's all the difference in the world between knowing the word of God and knowing the God of the word. That's right. I mean, Amen. it's just, it just is. And so, you know, when you're, when, when you've come through something like this, uh, you know, and I, I didn't ask to go through this, but I, at the same time, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know, being a one breath away from death all night long and, you know, struggling with the Lord. It, it just, uh, very precious to me. Amen. Can I believe that I heard you on a couple of other interviews that other podcasters had conducted with you. And I was so impressed with your other shows as well as of course the, the one that you're on now. So we're so very blessed that you're with us and telling your awesome, amazing, miraculous story of uh, the healing power of God uh, over your lungs and respiratory system. I believe that there was a snippet in one of the sh the previous podcasts where you said that you had a, an out of body experience uh, to where you you felt your 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 spirit leaving your body and you were looking at your body struggling was that true Man, Ken? Sure. okay could you tell us a little bit yeah. about that yeah there's i know yeah as i'm sitting here just hanging on for life just it was such a struggle just to breathe and just, you know, I'm, I'm concentrating on breathing just, and I could feel my spirit like leaving my body at times throughout the night. And yeah, it was like, you know, I'm it's my spirit would, you know, I could just kind of see this happening and my, and my spiritual dimension. And, and I'm just like, Oh, you know, just trying to, you know, to keep from having a full spiritual departure out of my body. I'm like, just hanging on. Yeah. But I, I felt like that several, several times throughout the night, like my spirit was leaving my body. I could, I could actually even feel it physically. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Can, uh, what I, would I you think, say? Let me, let me add something to that too. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I said, yes, sir. But and I, I think, you know, a lot of people don't like the King James, but I really like the way it, it, 
uses this language. It says they gave up the ghost. Wow. Yes. You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, and for some people, it, it, maybe that's their time to die. And we might translate that or say, you know, they, they, they lost the will to fight. They didn't have any more right. fight in them. Uh, you know, they were just ready to give up it, you know, and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it, 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 when you're not willing to give up the ghost, and as I said, you know, my prayer was, you know, God, let me hang around here a little bit longer to, to be around for my daughter. You know, there's, there's something to that scripture, and there's something to warring and fighting and spiritual warfare. Amen. You know, so much goes, so much goes on in the spirit realm that, you know, we just don't see, you know, we are. Yes. spiritually blind in a lot of ways you know right uh, speaking of spiritual warfare ken so do you think that there were people being used of the enemy as well as the enemy directly trying to discourage you uh when absolutely when you, could you tell absolutely. us about about that absolutely and you know i you know this is the thick i went you know, this is a really bad time, but when I went in the hospital, you know, um, I could feel a spirit of death. You know, wow. the Bible talks about unclean spirits and evil spirits and all different types of spirits. And, you know, um, but I, I could feel a spirit of death. And I mean, people were dying left and right. So mm -hmm. rightfully so, I suppose. But yeah, and, and people who had good intentions, um, you know, I, I, um, I had one uh, caregiver or tech, whatever, right there at the very beginning. And as I'm being set up and, you know, you have to get your head size fitted for this BiPAP machine, which I let them put me on. And, and uh, you know, this, um, this hospital worker's got, he's kind of in the corner here in my room and he's got his back turned to me and he's just mumbling on. And, and, he, and he says this to me. He says, people in your condition don't get up and walk out of here. Wow. And I could tell as soon as he said that, he felt terrible. But he was he was only saying what everybody else thought. Right. You know, like, you know, I don't I'm wasting my I'm wasting my time on you, buddy. Wow. But that when he said that, you know, I forgave him and I, I knew he felt terrible. You know, he's you know, probably saw some people died during the day. I don't know. And, you know, I, I uh, had great compassion on the caregivers that work with me. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I was like, you know, one of the 10 lepers when, when I got out, I went back and, you know, uh, said, Thank Hey, you. thanks. You know, I want to return to give thanks. It was like full circle and to them That's at awesome. the time. I mean, they were seeing so many people die. It was so it was so great for them to see me. It was an encouragement for them to see somebody come out of it and, and win. You know, it, it was encouraging for them to 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 get a to get a victory, to get a win, and to to see somebody prevail like that because they were, you know, uh, they were dropping around me. You know, I heard code right. blue plenty of times. Code blue, code blue. They all come running and. You know, it was like they had a ritual when someone would die. They would stand still for, you know, five, ten minutes. And, I mean, they were like statues. And then just bam, just like that, they all went back about their business. I don't know if they were. I, I would wow. like to think they were praying. I don't know what they were doing, you know, having a moment <laughs> of silence or prayer or whatever. But Oh, my gosh. Uh, I never you know, heard that you, before. That's weird. Wow. So yeah. They were in I mean, shock it, or maybe. I, I think they were probably just trying to get their minds together before they went back and started to go work on somebody else. You know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, wow. um, yeah, it was, it was, wow. a, it was a sight to behold. I bet. Yeah. Those I doctors that tried to put you on the ventilator, did they ever show up again or was that it? They just left. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You know, I, so the next morning, um, one of the doctors, uh, 
I, my wife and I, we actually ha had a nice little cute nickname for him, Michael. Uh, his nickname was Dr. Death. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Dr. Death. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but, I mean, he, he had really, uh, he's very experienced. I mean, and you know, he was very frank and his assessment of my uh, medical condition, but that morning he's making rounds. Okay. He's making, he's not expecting to see me around. And I see him coming across there and he stops right in front and, and I have to laugh. He, he walks up to the door and he slides that door open and he says, sir, he said, you must be a warrior. Wow. That's amazing. You must be a warrior. He said, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep my eyes on you. And, you know, I don't believe this man is a Christian. He's a different culture. And, you know, uh, but that was very powerful to me, what he said. It was, to me, it was almost prophetic. You know, if God can speak to a, a donkey, he can speak to a doctor. Yes. <laughs> Yes, amen. And I felt like, you know, man, that that just that just went right through me. You know, God, God was like speaking to him. You know, you you've uh, you've been in warfare. You're a warrior through this. Amen. So, yeah, Praise yeah. God. That's an amazing, beautiful story. I when I heard your story, I thought of the. I believe it was Psalm 91, one of the Psalms that talks about how uh, a thousand will fall at your yeah. right hand and, and, yeah. and the, 10, the pestilence thousand. won't come, 10,000, right. And uh, uh, the pestilence won't come near you. And definitely a promise of God for the believer in him that he's yeah. our protection. He's our provision. He's our healer. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, I yeah. believe means that yeah. he's, he's our healer uh what would you say to somebody who says uh well i don't believe necessarily i'm not necessarily a christian but i want to be healed by god you know do what would you say to that person i'm a christian well, that, but I mean, what about somebody yeah. who's just listening right now and they're not a christian <laughs> yeah well that, <laughs> you know i said that scripture to myself many times too i, I just there's so many scriptures that flowed up through uh, the whole process we I went through all of them, but yeah, that was very precious to me as well. Um, and they did, they fell to my left and my right, but right. yeah, to someone that's not a Christian, uh, man, uh, I would tell them, you know, Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. Um, you know, the ultimate healing, I mean, we're all going to die one day, but, um, it's a eternal significance or, for your soul and your spirit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would just tell them, you know, to trust Jesus, ask him to forgive your sins, to come into your heart and life. Um, Amen. you know, the spirit of God be born again, um, ask for forgiveness. Uh, and, you know, I, I believe in healing, uh, absolutely, uh, Amen. for, um, you know, the Christian and, you know, God is, done miracles on people who were not even christians yes. um i think you know sometimes in the bible it calls signs and wonders and you know jesus would do that in front of unbelievers just to demonstrate who he was the son of god and i think god's mercy is so great that um you know it's not it's not outside the realm of possibility for me at all uh, i would lean even say that God is so merciful that he has healed people in the past who weren't even Christians just to bring them, uh, bring them home, bring them back to repentance, bring them, uh, you know, bring the prodigal back. And, that's right. you know, judges, judges six thirteen it says, you know, if God be with us, you know, everybody runs around saying, you know, God's with us. If God be with us, you know, where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, and I always say, you know, in the Jewish mind and the Hebrew mind, you you couldn't separate the presence of God from the miracles of God. They went hand in hand. Amen. When Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, he said, you know, he's the Hebrew scholar. You know, the we know you're a man sent from God for no man can do these things you do except. And he uses those same exact four words that are in Judges 613, except 
God be with him. And you can trace it all the way up to Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for, and you got it again. God was with him. That's right. And, you know, to me, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, I, I don't believe one second this cessationists that think, you know, God's left us down here and, you know, you, you do the best you can, Michael, you take care of, uh, you know, no, I think God is active uh, and Amen. God is uh, alive and moves in our lives um, in supernatural ways. And, and I, I think we see more of that too is, um, you know, God says, you'll find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Amen. That's right. And, and I can say that that, that night was no holes barred. I mean, I, I was, I was seeking God with everything I had, nothing holding back. Cause I, you know, I knew I had to have God to, to make it. And, and that's when you get revelations like this, uh, when you, when you're, when you're desperate, you know, I, I've heard it said before and that God does not answer prayer. God answers desperate prayer. That's right. And if you look at the prayers in the Bible of the different people, I mean, we, I mean, we know there's a little edge to that, but, uh, but God, you know, most of the prayers in there are desperate prayers. Oh yes. You know, Absolutely. and sometimes I think that's when the supernatural occurs is when we're, we're so desperate that we can't do it on our own, you know, Ken Chen always has about 10 backup plans, always 10 or 20 resources, people are available. But when you get to the point where, you know, it's just you and God, I, I had no backup plan there. There's, Hey, there's no plan B for me. Uh, there's, there's nothing. It's I'm, Hey, it's just me and you Lord in this room together. Um, you know, and that's when you see the hand of God move on your behalf, I think. Amen. Absolutely. Well, I, I was happy to hear you say that, uh, that that uh, you don't believe in the cessationist doctrine, that, oh. that all, all the gifts and the baptism by fire uh, and all that, you know, died at, at the book of Acts. I mean, the healing is for today and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today. And because the scriptures state basically that, that, that the, these are for, for you, your children, your grandchildren, yeah. and those who are far off. And so yes. I think we're the ones that are far off. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are generations mm -hmm. from that time that that was spoken. And there's no scripture that indicates that any of these gifts had died, that you know, healing is for today and, and miracles yes. are for today. And your yeah. exhibit, your exhibit a, sir, <laughs> for sure. We're, we're so, we're so blessed yeah. by, by your amazing story. But I'm looking at your website. I'm seeing all the podcasts that you've done and that you're also starting your own podcast in the last few months and you've done dozens and dozens of interviews with other people sharing your testimony which is brilliant i'm writing scriptures down that you're i'm getting so fed from this i'm just feeling my armor and my swords getting cleaned and more <laughs> prepared for the, the battle ahead um let me ask you this personally because it's it's a big step before the show we were talking about podcasting and how some of the big, big churches, they think, okay, billions of dollars or millions of dollar buildings, and we want to reach these people. You see the value of this platforming on podcasting, doing interviews. How did you make that leap? Because if you're very educated and you, you have a background in doing financial advising and all kinds of things and, and being in the through seminary, and I mean, this is not very normal for people to come from that background and then step into this was was it this healing example this testimony or this experience or what really led you to do kind of what we're doing right now um if you will ken yeah great yeah that's a great question that's right on so as i began i i wrote a book um and um it's called an encounter with the healer it's available on my website or Amazon. And as I began to go on, I don't know how many pop, maybe 25 or 30. I don't know how many I've been on now, but 
I began to tell different people who were in positions of leadership in different churches. I'd say, wow, you know, Michael, man, um, I had no idea. You know, I look and, you know, this has got, you know, 40,000 views, 30,000 views. People are looking at it. They're commenting like crazy on the thread on it in the comment box on YouTube and these different, uh, you know, formats that they have. Um, and I, the, none of the leadership would really respond to it. You know, it seemed to me that they were more interested in trying to raise a few million bucks for another building. And I, I remember telling, telling a couple of them and in love, you know, the Bible says speak the truth in love. I said, look, I said, you know, I said, I was over, over the Labor Day weekend, I was on a podcast in Africa, Australia, wow. New Zealand, and Canada. And I, I said, you know, I, I reached more people with the gospel in one weekend than, than what the church is going to do in four or five years. Amazing. And, and I think it upset him a little bit. I, you know, I wasn't trying to do that. I was trying to like take the scales off his eyes and say, look, and I, I would say, you know, you got more connections than I do. I, I mean, you, you, you have all these pastors that y'all network together. You all have uh, people in your congregations who have testimonies that, of healings or salvations or, you know, uh, Saul, the Paul experiences coming to the Lord that people need to hear. And, you know, I, I, I and after, after a period of time, I mean, I, I'm shocked at where it's at and what's happened in such a short period of time. I felt like the Lord just says, well, you know, just do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's it's difficult to deal with religious leaders. You know, I think Jesus had his biggest problem with the religious leaders of the day. Uh, his harshest words were certainly to them. They weren't to the uh, to the common people or, you know. Um, so I started a podcast doing it. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, and I, I call it Encounters with God. And I've had some fantastic interviews, and I've got some more scheduled coming up. Uh and it's just exciting to see, you know, what the Lord is doing with that and the people that are touched by it and commenting on it. Oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, I never thought, never, never, never. Not, that's not in my game plan, you know, not at all, that I would ever be doing a, a podcast interviewing people uh, about their encounters with the Lord and, uh, but yeah, it's been such a blessing. Uh, awesome. Welcome to the club. We've we've had yeah. quite a journey. We've been at this for a long time and ups and downs and uh the Fringe Radio Network, I'm sure would love to have you as well if if you would like to have more listeners yes. via that platform and um we can talk to the owner if you want. Um we're we're all about promoting new voices that want to do kind of what we're doing and oftentimes doing even better of a job than, well, I won't say Gerilyn, but me, for example, I can't, I can't uh, self-censor. So I've been banned off of everything. I can't even start a YouTube account to, to subscribe or comment to anybody. Cause I used to have a big um, channel, yeah. but we, um, we are so excited to, to hear this and, and just the, your wisdom and, and your devotion to the Bible and to bring people back to that, uh, it's so needed, uh, in the, especially in the, the generation that does podcasting. Usually people that want to get lots of views and followers and, and they want to get the big scary story about the, you know, the alien yeah. spaceship dream abduction right. thing or whatever. And no, tell yeah. me the weird thing that the angel did to heal you from COVID. Like, I don't want to just hear, sure. you know, these scriptures. No, no, no. Tell me the weird out of body thing where Jesus showed you heaven and you know, Howard Storm, and we've interviewed these people. Yeah. I think you're going to bring a lot of equipping to this next generation. Amen. They're out there. There's a huge revival happening. It's secret. The, yeah. the lockdowns really woke people up. It's like, oh, wow, I need yeah. Jesus. So yeah. it's so timely that you're doing this, sir. And again, uh, you your website, Ken Chin with two N's, Ken, C-H-I-N-N dot -N com. 
and uh, the YouTube channel Encounters with God. Subscribe there. And um, who's who's coming up next on your on your interview list, sir? I'm going to be interviewing a uh, a man who has a doctorate of theology. Um, and you would think we would not even have to go down this path. It's, it's uh, such a sad commentary, but we're going to be discussing what is a man, what is a woman, wow. God, cre- God's creation. I mean, you know, we have drifted so far from the truth mm-hmm. and, you know, people are identifying in so many um, different ways. Yes, it's just, uh, you know, who would who would have thought, you know, that in a, a public school, they're putting uh, a, a cat litter box in the bathroom. I know. Because, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> cause someone, you know, the, the thing to do is to say, no, you know, you're you're not a cat. Speak the truth to them. Of that, course. That's, that's, that's right. That is the healthy thing to do. It's yes. not to. It's not to pat him on the back and say, oh, yeah, okay, you're, you're a little kitty cat. You know, no, that's just lying to him. <laughs> that's crazy. And, you know, people need to be told the truth. I mean, we don't need to. We, we have to speak the truth to them, uh, whether they like it or not. And the culture certainly doesn't like it right now. And the, the more we head down this slippery slope, you know, uh, uh, it's I, I don't know. That it's, is an uh, amazing episode. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, but I'm looking going forward to, be- to that. He's he's quite a Hebrew scholar, and we're going to delve into you know uh, the different Hebrew words about man and woman and 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 all oh, that, wow. and, and so it it should oh, be yeah. very relevant to what's going on in our culture today. Oh, for sure. That's very culturally and spiritually relevant. And the more podcasts uh, that I've been listening to, the more I realize that when people do choose to mutilate themselves to become transgender from becoming a a girl to a boy or a boy to a girl, they are just sorely regretful because only Jesus can fill that emptiness inside one's heart, right? And so when they... Yeah. We all believe that, uh, but not everyone does. And and the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy people's gender identity. And it t- back in the day, it used to just be one of two identities. But the enemy uh, wants to bring subtle and overt confusion about uh, who they are, you know. And and uh, I just every time I listen to a story about somebody who uh, was a young woman or a young man that that turned to the other sex because they were encouraged to go under the knife you know to become a eunuch or you know go through hormone gene therapy or what have you they they were always just remorseful and regretful thinking why didn't any medical or psychological professionals tell them that that is not going to solve or cure their mental or spiritual issues or problems uh but uh yeah absolutely that that's a very timely discussion ken for sure i'll be looking forward it, to hearing that it was interesting i was at a there's a a, a restaurant i frequented breakfast and a, a man came and pulled up uh, a chair beside me and my brother was having breakfast with me and he was talking about they were on the, the side of the road and they had set up this booth. Uh, they were giving out crosses and they were blocking this truck driver from getting in. And the truck driver was like, you know, pointing his hand at him, you know, kind of, you know, let's get out of my way. And so he, he moved and so forth. And he said he was waiting for the truck driver to get out. And the truck driver got out. He, she, I'm not sure, he wasn't sure, was wearing women's boots. Wow. Dressed up like a woman. Wow. And so he walks up to the man, really, and he says, can I give you a cross? And he says, I'm an abomination to God. No. No. And the man says, well, God loves you. You know, we, we've all made mistakes. 
can I give you a cross? And he says, tell me more. And he wow. sit there and he said, just tears begin to flow from this man's Praise eyes God. and face. And it, he led this truck driver right there uh, to the Lord. And, you know, but, um, you know, the, the damage, um, you know, it's uh, some of those things you can't undo that when you go right. under the knife and that sort of thing. But there's a very cool testimony to hear that is you know, absolutely a, a couple awesome. of days ago it's you know relevant to all the stuff that's going on mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. that that's an amazing story and when i see uh those, those people that are butch or what have you you know that that happened to go into the ladies restroom i'm always friendly to them and smile and say hi and i just yeah say a prayer for them. And, and if sure. for some reason, you know, they want to talk to me or whatever, I don't treat them like anybody else, you know, but I, I, I would love to have the opportunity to, to share with them the love of Jesus with them, because why should we, you know, like decry, you know, down with the transgenders and homosexuals and everything, but yet, yeah. you know, then, then give a pat, a blind eye to the fornicators and adulterers. I mean, they're both sins in the eyes sure. of God. And so yeah. we should, speak the truth in love, you know, look, look, God loves right. you, but he loves you enough to heal you of, of this and deliver you of this. That's amazing. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, that's like Eric Metaxas in his book, uh, letter to the American church. He can looks at Germany and how Germany fell under the spell of Hitler. When the church was strong uh, Hitler, they could have shut Hitler down in the beginning. Mm -hmm. There were 18,000 churches. 3,000 actually sided with Hitler. 3,000, they became what they called the confessing church, were resisting Hitler's movement. But 12,000 churches stood and said, we're just going to sit back and see what happens. They didn't speak out oh. and they didn't have a voice. And by the time that he began to make those little changes, it was too late for them to have a voice. Wow. And the whole point of his book is the American church is in the same situation. If we don't address these needs, if we don't address these cultural issues we see, if we're just silent about all this stuff we're talking about, yeah. we're going to fall just like, the, you know, just like Germany did. That's right. Amen. It's just, it's just, right it's just incre incremental little yeah. steps, little steps. And before you know it, you know, you're censored, you're canceled. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. So can, can you give us some last words that you want to listen, that you want to share with the listener or the watcher? Last words. Wow. I, I mean, not. The, the well, final, final, final last words. It, but... <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. should do another show. I, yes, I, I would mean, love sir, to have you another are show not, with you. You are on a roll. I just want to say thank you for uh, not only writing a book, not yeah. only you know being on shows, but for starting your own podcast because I know what that takes and so does Gerilyn. And we're just so honored that you're doing this and that you're on our show and, and just keep doing interviews and keep spreading the word because um, you're going to bring people who are listening for maybe other things like that new age girl you're mentioning that you were on her show sure. and just yeah. just love bomb them and scripture bomb and the end time church we need we need generals like you we need trainers that are going to say look the scriptures got me through this like yeah. the bible like study the bible and and I have one last question um, how does one learn the holy scriptures like you did to to get through that battle where can somebody start with that if they don't have a degree or you know if they work a busy job or have lots of kids do you have any practical advice for our audience yeah i just you know just take it bite size brother and you know if you don't have a, a knowledge of the bible you know just start reading the new testament you know maybe start with Romans or Philippians and definitely the gospels, the gospel of Mark is the shortest one to give you a, a picture of Christ. Uh, 
but yeah, just devour the word, you know, devour the word and, you know, try to uh, find a Bible based church. Uh, you know, I um, roll my eyes when I see what's happening to a lot of the mainline denominations. When you look at the Methodist church and, you know, to me, the, all these different denominations that were once on fire for God, uh, it's, um, I think it's kind of the end time apostate church now, once it used to be aflame with the Holy Spirit and the move of God. Now they don't even believe half the stuff in the scripture. You know, I, I don't know how they still call themselves a church mm -hmm. uh, when sad. they start, you know, ordaining people to the ministry that, uh, just so contrary to the word of God, but yeah, just study the Bible. Um, try to, uh, you know, find a, a pastor, a minister, a mentor, someone that uh, loves the Lord and is grounded in the word. Uh, yeah. That's right. A lot, lot, lot of tools. Uh, li listen to y'all's podcast. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> Ken, for sharing your testimonial and, uh, uh approaching us to be on our show we're, we're so blessed sure. i prayed that i prayed that god would bring people to to talk on our show that that need to and and it was funny because about six months ago i thought to myself i have been podcasting since 2015 and i've never interviewed somebody who that was directly healed by god supernaturally or at least uh that was never a topic of mine uh or, or there wasn't a guest that solely talked about the, the healing from god and and so and then you came along and i go oh thank you jesus <laughs> sometimes it's a thought or a, a, a request from our hearts that that god still answers the the prayer or thought or may, maybe god put that thought in my mind and because he was planning to bring you along. <laughs> so, Ken, thank you so much yeah. for being on our Stranger Clock podcast show. Oh, I mean, thank I think you for of that having scripture. Me. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. I think of that scripture uh, that, well, the reason why we call ourselves Stranger Clock podcast uh, is because uh, there's uh, that scripture that talks about how uh, we are peculiar people, uh, a, a holy nation, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, another word for pe peculiar would be strange. <laughs> so, exactly. so, you know, we, we have these peculiar, miraculous stories, you know, for the glory of God. And that's that's the reason why we call ourselves yeah. that. And, and we, we're so glad to have your uh awesome testimonial on our show and uh, we're looking forward to reading your book uh, and or listening to your podcast uh, for, the, for your timely subjects and uh, not only to hear more more of your testimonials and different angles of it but also uh, to hear uh, the different uh, topics that you're going to cover on, on your show so once again uh, when they go to YouTube they just type in Ken Chin and they should be able to to see your your, your and his YouTube, YouTube channel, channel I haven't been as as vocal on this podcast, so I've I've actually got four pages of notes right here, baby. Wow! Uh, Encounters with God on YouTube, and go to KenChin.com. Ken Chin with two N C H I N N, and there are actually two books: an encounter with the healer and true riches. And you're going to be blessed. I know Ken is just a wealth of scripture yes. and just teaching and he has a real missionary's heart and what he's doing pray for him and we bless you sir is you are being a missionary in the internet you're being proactive it takes a lot of work to do this keep strong take breaks when you need <laughs> you know rest in the lord but you we've I've got been, your back sir yeah, very much i've been so i've been so blessed to to the things just fell into place for me there was a a gentleman who had a very stable job at a company, uh, salary, 401k, insurance, and all that. And the man's got six kids. And wow. he felt like God he felt like God was telling him to quit his job and start his own media company. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And he came into my life and I came into his and it was just, it's been such a blessing for both of us. Uh, so yeah, it's a uh, Wingard media and, uh, he's, uh, incredible at what he does. He's got a, a professional and he did our, uh, audio books for true riches and for, uh, an encounter with the healer. And 
turned him on to some other people who are authors and he's going to be doing books for them as well. Awesome. But yeah, you know, when awesome. you make a, so, so when I made the commitment and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. You know, God <laughs> knows my limitations and God brought Lincoln in to fill in the spots where I was lacking. And he's just, you know, salt of the earth, man of God. And I, I laugh at him. I said, I said, Lincoln, I'd have to put out several fleeces before if I, I had six kids, but <laughs> brother, you, you, uh, you Ooh. really stepped out in faith, you know, but, uh, I'm glad he did. I'm glad he was obedient to the Lord and it's, uh, fruit starting to show up for him now. Awesome. Uh, you know, it just goes to show you when you, when you make a move for God, God's there for you. You know, uh, I couldn't do it by myself and it just was just, you know, a divine connection. Just like meeting you too. Amen. This is definitely a divine connection for sure. We're part of a, a, a pretty well-established and, and long time existing on the very early days of the internet network of Christians that you would consider the fringe Christian community. And we've been talking about, you know, churchianity forever and all this kind of stuff. And Fair. You could say it kind of dovetails with like with the conspiracies a little bit, but our heart is to win souls, and it's it's really yeah. brilliant that God brought you into connection. At least we'll see where this goes and we'll, how we can help work with this because that's really, I mean, gosh, bless Lincoln for yeah. his work and his faith and Wingard Media and yeah, amen. We're all kind of just doing this from you know in our part time where we all of us work. You know, no none yeah, of us get to right. do this full time except for maybe like one yeah. percent that work with Skywatch TV or something, but um, it's a big community and uh, we look forward to collaborating with you more in the future. So sure. keep it up and yeah. thank you so much. I'm, I'm open, open to it. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, maybe y'all, maybe y'all could be guest on my show. I don't know. We'll, we'll see we where that goes. We would love to. Yeah. We would be honored. Yeah. We'd be honored and privileged and blessed. I think that's the first time we've ever been asked from this show. This is a relative. <laughs> I know. Well, we're getting to one year, but we've been, uh, <laughs> we come from other shows and now we're, we're starting this. Thank you so much, sir. That would Thank be you fun. so much, Ken. Yeah. One last question Thanks. for you, Ken. How did sure. you stumble on our podcast? How did you find us? Once I uh, started um, looking at this, the, the very first podcast I was on was, uh, to me, it was just a God thing. Uh, I, I was, and I, I mean, podcasting, it was just another world for me. I, I don't come from this background at all, and I'm not a, a, a high-tech guy. But I, I thought, well, I'm just going to send this man a, a an email. He had his email out there, and he's got a, a ton of followers. I'm talking a ton of followers. And he responded within about five minutes. Wow. And I was like, I didn't think he would even respond at all. And he wow. had a couple of, and he had a couple of questions. This was a Friday night. I'm about to go to, I'm, I'm in bed actually. I'm just toying with my phone before I go to sleep. And, and he asked me a couple of questions. I responded. He said, can you be on tomorrow at 11 o'clock Saturday? Wow. That's quick. And uh, this man, I mean, this is his living. It's, uh, he makes a living. He's got, you know, the channels monetized and all that sort of thing. Wow. And so someone had to cancel on him. I feel like and it was like, God, you know, open this door and, and, you know, for this, because some of these people are very methodical. They have guests scheduled out, you know, like you're talking about, you know, y'all just do this when you can. And, and you, you have families and work and all that, but you know, the people that have these huge followings, you know, that's their living. Right. And so, uh, apparently God opened the door and, and from there that just kind of started rolling, you know, because of his influence. And I started seeing other, uh, Christian podcast groups on, uh, Facebook and the internet and different things. And so I thought, well, you know, this is this is kind of cool. This is kind of different. This is a way to get the gospel message, God's, uh, you know, message out there. So I, uh, 
I started uh, putting in some requests to some other people that I saw and, you know, one thing led to another. And, you know, I, right now, I mean, it's, I don't know, I, as I said, I've probably been on 25, maybe 30 podcasts as a guest and wow, you know, um, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Those, pe- those do you people, mind- are, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kent. Do you mind specifically how you you found us? Though, did you type in Christian podcast on YouTube, or how did you find us specifically? Do you mind if I ask? It may have been that. Yeah, it was something. It had something to do with Christian podcasting or podcasting, or and then I found within that was um, something we kind of touched on just briefly. Was there's a, a whole another niche there is like near death experiences. Yes. And so I found that those people were very interested, even though, you know, they didn't come from a faith, a Christian faith type background. They, they found what uh, my story, my book, they found it fascinating because it's, it was a little bit kind of extreme to them. Uh, and, and a lot of them, a lot of them caught flack. You know, they would say, well, you know what? You got a Bible oh. thumper on here. That's not, we don't want to hear scripture. Oh. You know, I, I was called a few names, Michael, you know, it's like, you know, oh, I, no. you know, I just thought it was, I just thought it was funny, but <laughs> you know, um, you know, I couldn't get past the first five minutes because he quoted so much scripture. <laughs> oh thought, my goodness. You know, wow. but, yeah, well, but most of our audience, yeah. Most of our audience will love the fact that you're quoting scripture, but there's going to be an occasional few who stumble on this because of, they might have clicked on the hashtag healing or yeah. hashtag yeah. NDE for nor- uh, near death experience or something yeah. like that. And uh, that that is amazing, Ken, that that you've been on these different shows uh, due to these different rabbit trails, like uh, where people that are. Uh, yeah into near-death experiences, into miraculous right. healing, sure. whatever it is it, you, that your, your, your story uh, can, can, uh, is so, so flexible. It can go in these different directions. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're very blessed to have you on here. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ken, for being on our show and telling us your story. And uh, thank you so much, listener or, or watcher. Uh, for listening or watching the Strange O'Clock podcast with Michael and Jerry and our special guest, Ken Shin, who was healed by God of COVID. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Strange O'Clock podcast with Michael and Jerry. We had the pleasure of interviewing our awesome guest, Ken Shin, who discussed his miraculous healing by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't received Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, You can do that right now, and you can also be healed internally, and I pray externally as well. All you have to do is just say, Jesus, I ask you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I repent and confess all of my sins to you. I want to get to know you through your love letter to me by reading or listening to the Word of God, the Bible, and help me to be the kind of person you want me to be forever. Help me to live for you every single day from this moment forward. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple, folks. All you need to do is just simply call upon his name and you'll become born again. And I know that there are some people who've done that, who've continued to live the life that they were beforehand, and that's not true salvation. True salvation is living for him every moment of every day and getting to know him. He loves you and wants to make you a new creation in Christ. Anyhow... Thank you so much again for listening to the Stranger Clock podcast with Michael and Jerry. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If you could just do us a huge favor and give us a thumbs up on YouTube or like and share and subscribe or do all of the above, that would be awesome. Also, if you can go to Spotify and give us a great rating or uh, Apple Podcasts and give us a great rating as well. If you could do all the above and email us or message us on Facebook, that would be great. We are also on Facebook. Just type in Strange O'Clock Podcast and you'll find our Facebook page. If you like that, that would be awesome. That way you can be up to date with any future podcasts that we have. Another strange and interesting, hopefully interesting information. God bless you and have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening wherever you are at in the world. Bye!